Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode of Basics with Blake. We are going over the second of Ruben Fine's 30 chess principles. This one is to develop your pieces, which mostly means knights and bishops, although uh, rooks and queens as well, but to get your pieces out and to make threats, develop with threats. So, uh, okay, we've got four games to go over, but first let's discuss why, why do we want to do this? Why is this a good thing? Well, the basic premise is that when we attack our opponent, it really limits their choices in what they can do to defend. So, for example, if we play something like a Scandinavian defense here, white can bring a piece out to attack this, this queen, knight c3. And black needs to be careful where he retreats the queen, or white's just going to bring more and more pieces out uh, to keep threatening this queen. And while black is busy running the queen around to various spots, white keeps bringing pieces out and threatening this queen. And pretty soon, white's going to have all the pieces developed, and black will still just be running this queen around. So black should keep in mind all of white's attempts to th threaten the queen and move the queen to uh, a safer spot. Okay, again, we're going over four of Morphe's games. This first one, he's playing white, and he's playing Theodore Lichtenhain. This was played in New York in 1857 uh, as a blindfold simultaneous exhibition. And, uh, okay, this starts as a king's gambit. And what we're going to do in these games is we're going to keep track of all the threats that are being made and all the potential threats uh, that could come up. Okay, so pawn to f4 for Morphe starting the king's gambit. And already there is a threat on this pawn, although pawn to f4 doesn't quite help us develop. So we're not quite following the, the rule yet, but the basic premise is that if black accepts this pawn, which he does, black has gotten a pawn, but he's also taken his pawn out of the center of the board, which is what white hopes to win on in this position. Okay, so when you're playing the white pieces, you see that you don't really have any threats or any captures that you can make immediately. Uh, but you do want to watch out for what your opponent can do. If you are very careless and you play a move like pawn to d4, just trying to get your two pawns in the center like the first rule, well, you could be met with a threat with queen to h4 check, which not only develops the piece, but puts white in an awkward spot when he needs to move his king somewhere. So you can choose to block one of your bishops by moving your king somewhere. And of course, you're never going to get castled either. Or you can play maybe a worse move, which is pawn to g3, in which case black has even more threats. Black could simply capture. You can't recapture because your h2 pawn is pinned. And if you try and develop with threats now, and let's say bring the knight out to attack the queen, black has a spectacular move that's not queen takes pawn. In fact, he has the move pawn to g2, which comes with two threats. One's against your king, and one is against your rook. So after taking the queen, black regains his queen, and he even captures a rook on top of it. So this idea of queen to h4 check is really powerful. So white should probably develop and stop this threat of queen to h4 check. So white plays knight to f3. Bishop to c4 is uh, perhaps a move as well as... Queen to h4 check means the king can move over to f1, and then white could continue developing with more threats with knight to f3 hitting the queen. Although, again, the trade-off is that white can't castle and his king blocks his rook. So knight to f3 here, and black plays somewhat of a, a gambit of his own here. Although this is not so much a gambit for center control as much as it is for developing the pieces. Okay, so black's making a threat, and he's also helping to develop his bishop. So he's following the rule, develop with threats here. So white needs to do something about this threat. He chooses to capture on d5. Now, black here doesn't play the best move. The best move is, again, to develop a piece, a knight or bishop, and to make a threat. And one thing black could threaten is the d5 pawn. He doesn't want to capture it right away with something like the queen, the queen takes d5 because this allows white to, again, follow the rule, develop with threats with knight to c3, 
And again, the queen must be careful where she moves after this. But either way, white has developed with a threat here. Black should try to get this pawn back with a knight or a bishop. So the best move for black is knight to f6, threatening the pawn. Now, if white plays knight to c3 and black captures, this knight actually doesn't have to move. This knight can stay right here. And if white captures and black captures, black has this queen in the center of the board, and white doesn't really have a way to develop and threaten her. So she's actually just fine on d5 here. And on the other hand, if white plays a move like pawn to c4 to try and protect it, well, black might opt for a little more development by giving white another pawn. Pawn to c6, and if pawn takes, black has a nice open center, he's got his knights developed, and uh, he's, actually, he's actually a little bit ahead in terms of time, as opposed to white. Okay, black doesn't play the best move, though. He makes... Uh, a somewhat ineffective threat. He plays bishop to e7, lining up with the queen to go to the h4 square to make a check. Now, one thing Morphe can try and do is if he doesn't want to get checked, he can try and castle, but there's a piece in the way. So we might be looking at developing the bishop next. Okay, so where does the bishop go? Well, it needs to make a threat. That's the theme of this game. If you don't make a threat and you go to just any square like bishop c4, well... You gave your opponent license to do anything they wanted, so bishop h4 check is going to come in. So this bishop needs to attack something, and the only square to do that is bishop b5 check, threatening the king. Okay, now this was going to be an ineffective threat a little bit earlier. If we had played bishop b5 check here, this does develop and it does make a threat, but analysis is going to be a little... A little more valuable than the principles. So remember to think about the specifics. Here black wants to get out of check and he probably wants to make a threat while doing it. So black could come up with the move pawn to c6 forcing this bishop to move again and then black has even controlled the center a little bit more on d5. So this check although it made a threat black made a threat back against white and even helped his own center control. But in this case, after bishop b5 check and pawn c6, now white doesn't have to retreat the bishop. He can meet this threat by making some threats of his own. And in fact, he has a threat on the board, which is pawn takes on c6. Okay, black here could maybe just develop his knight and play knight takes c6, but this doesn't make any threats, and now the knight's in a pin. This would allow Morphe to simply castle in this position. Instead, black opts to play pawn takes on c6, supported by the knight, and creating a threat against the bishop on b5. So now that black's making this threat, white has to move again, although one drawback is that the knight cannot come to c6 any longer. Now white moves the bishop to c4, as there's no more pawn in the way on d5, so this is now a nice diagonal for the bishop. Okay, so when white retreated the bishop, he couldn't make a threat, so black's going to come through with his plan. Bishop to h4 check, and Morphe came up with a very interesting idea here. Rather than just playing a move like king to f1, trying to get out of check, uh, certainly don't capture, we've seen what happens when the queen comes in. Morphe actually plays pawn to g3. Okay, well black has a threat here to capture. And again, rather than capturing back, Morphe finds a great move. He actually castles in this position. So it's a little odd because it looks like the black pawn is still attacking white, and indeed it is. Black goes ahead and captures on h2. But Morphe's very careful not to expose his king in this game. In fact, he's going to play king to h1, using the black pawn as cover against uh, the, bl uh, the black attackers trying to come at him. So for example, if Morphe ever had a chance to take on h4, and the queen recaptures this, no longer comes with check, and uh, really white has a hard time, uh, black has a hard time attacking the white king here. No pieces can, no black pieces can capture the h2 pawn. So okay, white is also starting to line up some other threats with the bishop on c4. It's looking at f7, this is defended once, but one, once Morphe castled, his rook on the f-file is also eyeing this pawn. 
And all that needs to move out of the way is the knight. So there could be a move like knight takes bishop and then taking on f7 with check. Or perhaps even a move like knight to e5, which further attacks f7. So really everything can start to pile up on f7. Black sees this and he retreats his bishop and tries to cover up uh, this file uh, for the rook attacking. Now, Morphe here plays a, a very strange looking move. A uh, normal looking move might be pawn to d4, just getting in the center of the board and helping to develop some more pieces. But Morphe, uh, Morphe plays the move knight to e5, which is very interesting because it looks like it might drop a knight. And I'm actually not sure how good this is for white. It's certainly going to be a sharp attacking game. White's not going to take this f7 pawn with the bishop. He's actually going to try and get a larger piece in there. So rook and bishop are attacking, but queen to h5 adds another threat on the f7 pawn and threatens the bishop. So black should play a move like queen to d4, which makes an escape square for the king. Uh, the game follows somewhat similarly, although not exactly, and again, this is a very sharp attacking game. White's going to have to find ways to bring his pieces out to attack the black king, who is totally unsafe. But remember, he has given up a piece for this attack. So perhaps black saw this move. He didn't take this knight. He actually played knight to h6, just defending his f7 pawn. Okay, if you're playing white and we really want to take this pawn, we could consider just getting rid of this knight on h6. So one way to do that is to uncover the bishop. Morphe plays pawn to d4, grabbing the center, uh, protecting the knight, most importantly freeing up this bishop, perhaps with threats to capture on h6. So Morphe's, uh, he can develop his bishop now and he has a threat uh, to the h6 knight. Now is when black actually plays bishop takes on e5. So the knight was protected, but we actually don't quite want to capture it back as white. If we capture this back, well, we've opened up a threat for black to play a queen trade. After queen takes queen and rook takes, remember white has given up some material here. So if we count the pawns, there's six black pawns and four white pawns. Uh, Morphe is down two pawns. Maybe he can get one back. But he's certainly not up in material, and he doesn't have an attack anymore now that he's traded off the queen. The queen, remember, is your best piece for trying to get checkmates and attacks. So here Morphe will preserve his queen. He's not going to take the bishop. He's going to play the other move we looked at just a second ago with queen to h5. Okay, so queen to h5, piling up on f7 again. And here... Black's put in a tough spot on how to defend. If he castles, he doesn't address Morphe's earlier threat of playing bishop takes knight. So Morphe could play this, and after pawn takes, well, now this g file is really open, and white can even get this bishop back. So we don't want to do that if we're playing black. There, there are a lot of ways for rooks to come in. And... Black has a hard time bringing other pieces to defend because this pawn is actually pinned, so the bishop could simply take in this case. Uh, maybe maybe Black could try other moves to defend the pawn, like uh, perhaps queen to e7 is worth a try. Uh, although, again, it's hard to say this is a very, very sharp position. Black chooses the move. Queen takes on d4 uh, to help... Uh, defend his extra material. But he's not doing anything about f7 other than maybe giving his king some squares to run to. And this is exactly what Morphe wants. Okay, so Morphe's going to start. Remember, all the threats are piled up on f7. Perhaps Morphe could have taken this knight earlier with the bishop, but he's going to find a different use for it. Bishop takes check, knight takes, and now not rook takes because this no longer comes with a threat. In fact, black has a threat to checkmate you in one move here, so keep that in mind. So queen takes check, the king comes over, and now we go back to our op our opening rule. Develop with threats. Can we get one of these pieces out and make a threat? 
Well, the answer is yes. We can bring the bishop to g5 and make a threat with check. Black can't move the king, and he can't get any extra pieces out. He is forced to block with bishop to f6. Okay, let's go back to our opening rule again. Can we develop and make another threat? Why, yes, in fact, we can. Knight c3 makes a threat, but it's actually not with the knight. The knight's not attacking anything. Uh, the threat is actually, because the king and queen are on the same file, white wants to play rook to d1, which would pin the queen to the king. So black should address this first. Black plays bishop to d7 to block. And perhaps rook to d1 is still worth a look because it brings the rook out and it makes a threat against the queen and maybe some future threats against black's king. But Morphe finds an even better move. He finds a nice tactical shot. And there are two ways to do it. Morphe chooses uh, Morphe chooses a more the most forceful way, I think. He plays rook takes f6. So bringing his rook in and making a capture. And now note that the a1 rook defends the checkmate on g1 from the queen. Black cannot capture this back. Otherwise, a bishop takes check. Will be a fork on the king and the queen and the rook. Uh, another option for Morphe maybe was to play queen takes g7. With, uh, with some of the same ideas, this bishop is pinned two different ways. Uh, to the king and the queen and Morphe still has more threats of playing bishop takes bishop with check and uh, even queen takes rook after this and Morphe chooses rook takes f6 uh, black does not capture he in fact starts moving his king okay uh, now that there is no more discovery from the bishop there's actually a threat against white's rook now black could simply play uh, pawn takes rook so White needs to get his threats coming. Okay, well, this bishop's not really helping attack to attack the king anymore. Morphe relocates it with a threat. Bishop f4 check. This will force the black king to keep running. He chooses king to b7. His king is still in a pin uh, in this case. And, and now Morphe finds a move to make two threats at once. And this is kind of one of the secrets to winning chess games, is if you can make two threats at once. It's really hard to defend both threats. He plays rook d6, threatening the queen, and the bishop on d7. The queen moves over to c5, and before Morphe executes his threat of capturing the bishop, he's going to crawl some pieces a little closer in the center. Remember to go through the center, uh, and uh, you can checkmate your opponent and work your, your pieces together a little better. He plays knight to e4, coming into the center and making a threat against the queen. The queen captures on c2, but Morphe's not worried about the material because he's got a huge attack on black's king now. Okay, so after knight e4, now Morphe comes with his other threat. Rook takes d7 check. Knight takes, queen takes it, winning a point of material, but more importantly, this black king uh, has got almost nowhere safe to go. The king comes over to a6, and Morphe makes one final threat that black uh, just cannot really combat. Knight to d6, starting a threat to checkmate with with a move like uh, maybe queen to b7. Black plays rook hd8. He comes with his own threat, but he didn't really address white's threat first, which was to play queen b7. Check. King a5. And pause the video if you want to find uh, the, the nice checkmate in three idea here. White plays bishop d2 check, clearing this queen out of the way. And now mate in two follows knight c4 check. And it was it was a fork, but more importantly, there's checkmate now. Morphe chooses pawn b3 checkmate, although another checkmate is to play queen to b3 checkmate. So, okay, that was the first game. And we see that uh, even though it was, it was closer to the middle game over here, uh, around move 15, Morphe still used the rule develop with threats, bringing out this knight and bishop, uh, as he was still not fully developed here. So this helped him bring out his extra pieces and held back some of black's pieces from joining into the game. Okay, let's go over another game. Okay, Morphe is also white in this game. 
And this one is also a King's Gambit. This one is Birmingham 1858, another blindfold simul. And black is Lord George Williams Littleton. So Morphy's playing one of the uh, uh, the upperclassmen uh, of Birmingham. E4, E5 again, King's Gambit. And black accepts it. And let's see, this time the variation is slightly different. But Morphy still starts with knight to f3. And black plays pawn to g5. So one thing black is doing is he's simply defending the pawn because eventually after white plays pawn to d4, maybe not necessarily right here, but eventually when the pawn comes to d4, the bishop wants to capture on f4. This is going to make it difficult for white to hold on, uh, for black to hold on, or for white to recapture this pawn. Plus another idea is perhaps the pawn could march up to g4 attacking the knight and forcing it to relocate, and the pawns could make white's king uncomfortable but uh, keep in mind this is this is quite a few pawn moves black is committing to okay so morphe plays the move pawn to h4 he really doesn't want to let this pawn stick around on g5 because again he needs to develop his bishop and he really wants to have a threat on the f4 pawn so pawn to h4 challenges g5 of course black doesn't want to take not only does this undefend f4 and in fact all of the pawns here are now uh, doubled and isolated uh, but morphe could keep developing and making captures with rook takes h4 bringing the rook into the game and black needs to be careful what he does to defend if pawn to h6 keep in mind this x-ray against the rook because after pawn takes the h6 pawn is now pinned and black would lose the rook if he captures. If black defends with the pawn to f6, there could be a really cool sacrifice with knight takes on g5, opening up room for the queen to come to h5. And queen h5 check starts a very nice attacking game here. So pawn to h4, black plays pawn to g4. In response so again with the idea of pushing up attacking white's knight although now his f4 pawn does not have quite as much support morphe plays knight to e5 black decides to develop with a threat morphe has just made a threat on g4 not only with the knight but with the queen two attackers zero defenders black can't really hope to defend this pawn again he could waste time with more pawn moves by playing like pawn to h5, but this would only help Morphe either uh, bring out another piece with bishop to c4, or sometimes you see even a sacrifice with knight takes on f7. So the pawn moves will only help Morphe with, uh, with his plan of bringing out more pieces. Okay, black plays, pawn to d6, developing his bishop. It doesn't quite defend g4 enough, but it does... Uh, help it to develop and it makes a threat against the knight so morphe must move the knight again morphe plays knight takes on g4 okay uh, black doesn't really have any good reason to trade as this only lets another white piece come forward and okay so what does black play uh, black decides to develop and indeed he makes another threat and he makes a threat that white can't really address with a threat of his, of his own or a capture so he's not going to play a move like knight to f6 he's actually going to play the move bishop to e7 lining up on h4 and white has no great way to combat the move bishop h4 check he can maybe save the pawn but bishop h4 check is still coming in either way and morphe's just wasted a move moving his pawn again so Morphe decides to control the center instead. So he plays pawn d4, addressing this threat by ignoring it. Black captures on h4 with check. Morphe blocks with his knight, knight to f2. And black captures on f2, white recaptures. Okay, so what is, what is black thinking here? Well... The white king cannot really castle, this is true, although he is out of the way for the rook if it wants to come to e1, 
And black has a hard time bringing some other pieces out, like the queen coming to h4, as this is guarded by the rook. On the other hand, white has good center control, and he has open lines for his bishops, and even this rook. Okay, so black's turn, he's going to try and develop with more threats. Black sees there is a little weakness on e4 that he can try and attack. So he develops his knight, knight to f6. Attacking, Morphe develops, and he neutralizes this threat. So he plays knight to c3. You probably don't want to play bishop to d3 because your bishop is blocked by the pawn. And black is probably not going to put his king over near h7, as this g file is very open. So castling is not something black wants to do here. So knight to c3, preserving the flexibility of this bishop. And... Black tries to develop with another threat, although this threat proves to be ineffective. Uh, Black did not quite calculate ahead, um, and he probably wouldn't play his next move if he had, or if he had seen what Morphe's plan was. So Morphe actually sees this is an ineffective threat, and we're going to get to why. But he decides to develop and make a capture. So he plays bishop takes f4. Now Black not realizing there is a tactic afoot. Plays knight takes e4 check, thinking he's won a pawn. Knight takes e4. And queen takes e4. And now there's a tactic for Morphe if we just follow the rule to develop with threats. So take a look at black's king and queen. They're on the same file. You'd really like to get a rook onto e1 in order to help uh, pin the queen to the king. But... You need you need one move to get one of these rooks over here. You need a you need to find an extra move somewhere. Uh, the way you do that is you develop and you make a threat. So looking around, it looks like the only reasonable threat is bishop b5 check. And if black were to block this, well now you have now you have a, a move to play rook to e1 with your pin. So okay, black doesn't want to get his king pinned, so he plays king to f8, and Morphe continues developing with threats. And remember, you have to keep in mind your opponent's threats. This queen is threatening your bishop on f4, so a move like rook to e1 would simply lose your bishop, uh, and it would also lose it with a check as well. So instead, Morphe, uh, he gets this bishop a little closer uh, to what's important, which is the king. He's attacking the king. He plays bishop to h6. So he's relocating the bishop with a threat to the king and forcing him to move to g8. So now this king is boxed in. Black's not really playing with this rook. And black's queenside development is really lacking here. So Morphe's got a really good attacking game uh, going on here. Okay, again, how can we bring in more pieces, develop them into the game, and make threats? Well... This king, remember, he didn't want to come to this open g file, but uh, he, he was kind of forced in this case. So if we could get a rook on the g file, uh, that would force black to block with his queen, and then we could play rook takes queen. So it should follow that perhaps we want to develop this rook on h1 somewhere to get it on the g file. Okay, so there's only three spots to do it, and... Two of them, black is threatening, so the only spot left is h5, rook to h5, and if we take a look, black doesn't really have any great threats. If we had tried to do a different plan, like rook to e1 to get on this back rank, black actually does have some threats. He could play queen to h4 check, picking up this bishop. So rook to h5 here. Black Black's looking around for some threats, but he doesn't quite have any, so he realizes he needs a different piece to block on g6 rather than with his queen. So he brings his bishop over to f5 uh, so that he can block with the bishop. Okay, Morphe doesn't really, he doesn't play this check. Uh, if he goes rook to g5 check, he didn't really accomplish anything. Uh, this rook was already kind of developed, and it's just helping Black play a move that he wants to play anyway. Morphe develops another piece. So, okay, the, the rook can't really develop. So he, he's going to develop the queen, and he makes two threats. 
uh, in fact. Queen to d2. One threat is to play queen to g5 with check, and then after black blocks, the queen goes to the back rank on queen to d8, uh, which will probably result in checkmate. So black's going to block one threat by playing bishop to g6. So now if the queen comes over to g5, black could maybe develop this knight and the back rank is defended. But here comes Morphe's second threat. Uh, and his threat was to make another threat with a different piece, the rook. He develops with a threat again. Morphe plays rook to e1, getting the rook onto the back rank with a threat against the queen. And in this position, black resigns as he cannot save the queen and prevent the back rank checkmate from coming in. Okay, so let's look at another example. Let's see, this one, I believe Morphe is actually playing black in this game. Uh, yes, it, oh no, Morphe's playing white in this one as well. This was another blindfold uh, simultaneous exhibition, Paris 1858, Morphe's white, and black is pretty. This is a Sicilian defense. Okay, so pawn e4 for Morphe, and pawn c5 starts to Sicilian. Controlling the center of the board, but kind of from the side, from the sides over here, from the flanks. Okay, so back in Morphe's time, the Sicilian defense didn't quite have as much theory as it did now. Uh, so the Sicilian, a lot of the ideas were, uh, were more simplistic uh, back then. Again, a lot of the theory hadn't been developed. Okay, so modern players usually play like a knight to f3, and pawn to d4 would start to open Sicilian. And black's got his choice of knight to f6, pawn to d6, maybe even uh, knight f6. So after one of these moves, white plays pawn d4, captures, and knight captures, you start to open Sicilian. And again, black chooses between Nidorf or, uh, or, or dragon positions, Nidorf, dragon, Scheveningen, black can push pawn to e5, these have a bunch of names as well. Um, but Morphe, however, he plays a slightly different move order. He plays pawn to d4 first, which most people playing this will actually start, uh, they will actually start to smith more again, but playing pawn to c3, trying to get their knight out. However, after uh, pawn to d4, which had a threat against black's pawn, and black has his own threat, uh, now Morphe plays knight to f3. So really, this is only different on one move. Again, black could play like pawn d6 or knight c6, pawn to e6, maybe knight to f6 as well. Black could play any of these moves, but the one difference is black has the option of playing pawn to e5 here, which uh, the author of the book lists as a weak move, although if I turn on the engine, I think it might say this is playable still. So pawn to e5, okay, black's freed up the bishop to move somewhere. He's got two central pawns. Note that with black's first move, this didn't really help him develop. Uh, none of the knight, none of the bishops have been freed with this first move, while with pawn to e4, Morphe can bring his bishop out. And with his second move, pawn d4, he's freeing out his bishop. And with black's response, pawn takes, again, Black hasn't freed any of his bishops out. Black is kind of trailing behind in development here. So Morphe's actually not worried about the pawn that he's given away while he can bring his pieces out faster. Now there's a slight trap here. It looks like maybe Morphe could take on e5, but remember to evaluate your opponent's threats. Your knight's weak and your king is open. Queen to a5 check, makes a fork, and picks up the knight. So this is a, a trap that I've seen couple of people fall into. But if you're playing white, just don't take the pawn. Just play your other normal moves and just keep developing. Here there are no real threats to be made, so uh, bishop c4 controlling the center. And black chooses uh, perhaps an ineffective developing with a threat move. Okay, so he plays bishop to b4 check, which okay develops and there's a threat to the king, but uh, remember, analysis is going to uh, 
is going to supersede the principal. So let's let's examine. White, of course, wants to get out of check, so pawn to c3. If he were to block with the knight or the bishop, this would actually make bishop b4 a useful developing with a threat move. So he kicks it out with pawn c3. Again, don't take with the knight because then the black bishop has a reason for being on b4. Or if he takes with b takes on c3 instead, threatening the bishop and forcing it to move once again. The bishop moves to c5. And note that now after this bishop b4 check move, with this pawn on c3 and the bishop on b5, queen to a5 no longer makes a check, and it also does not threaten the e5 square. So now it's actually a safe time to play knight takes e5. There is maybe a tactic if you're familiar with scotch gambit type of positions. Uh, there is a slight tactic where you could play bishop takes f7 check, king takes f7, and you fork the king and bishop, by playing queen d5 check, and you pick up the bishop after this. But this wins one pawn, while Morphe's move, knight takes e5, wins two pawns. As not only has he captured one pawn, but he's now threatening on f7. Okay, so black defends by making a threat of his own, but uh, Morphe's threats seem like they're, uh, like they're going to be greater, at least... Uh, in the immediate term. So black has a threat to checkmate, so don't play knight takes f7 thinking you've won a rook. Again, you're getting checkmated. Instead, Morphe makes a, a greater threat. He plays bishop takes f7 with check, so Morphe's got not one, but two pawns in this case. The king needs to move over, so king to f8. And now Morphe needs to decide what to do about this checkmate and the threat that black is placed on the knight on e5. So it should follow that when white moves this knight, keep in mind the knight's defending the bishop, so if you move the knight just anywhere, well now you lose the bishop. So we have to, we have to cover all of these threats. Uh, we definitely have to defend f2 directly, or we're going to get checkmated. Uh, Morphe moves his knight, and he needs to defend f2, but the way he defends f7 is by making a threat of his own. So in this case, the best defense is also a counterattack. Knight d3, stopping the checkmate, and counterattacking in case black decides to grab his bishop. Black is actually reluctant to trade the bishops here, although this bishop on f7 is such a great attacking piece that perhaps black should be fine with queen takes bishop and white playing knight takes bishop. But in this position, black is a pawn down, so perhaps he wants to try and keep more pieces on the board. Which is why black plays bishop b6. Morphe takes the opportunity to save his bishop as well, bishop b3. And okay, black plays pawn to d6. No threats, but developing uh, his bishop, um, he has the potential to develop his bishop along the diagonal. Okay, Morphe develops and he makes a threat. So what threat can Morphe make? It's not immediately apparent, but bishop to a3 does make a threat because we are pinning the pawn. We are threatening to make another threat by playing pawn to e5, which would not only attack the queen, but load up on this d6 pawn. So black's going to find a move to develop and stop the threat of pawn going to e5. He plays knight to c6. Okay, can Morphe make another move that renews his threats while uh, while completing his his opening um, his opening goals? Why, yes, he actually can. He castles in this case, renewing the threat of pawn to e5. Well, again, it's not totally clear how this is a threat, at least not immediately, but. Uh, we can see that uh, that indeed there there is going to be a threat. Let's see, what did black play here? After Morphe castles... Let's see, ah, black plays a move that uh, doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. It's knight to h6. So he's brought his knight over to the wrong part of the board. Um, 
there's nothing to be protected on f7. He can't really go over to this square f5. Maybe he's hoping to protect the g4 square so he can play a move like maybe bishop g4 or knight g4 with some checkmate ideas on h2. But uh, none of these ideas work, and uh, they're certainly not very quick threats either. A more natural looking move is to play knight to e to g7, which puts another piece in the way of this diagonal, which helps to suppress the attack from the bishop. But after knight to h6, black did not address Morphe's threat. Perhaps he didn't even see the threat. Okay, pawn to e5. Uh, the pawn is pinned by the bishop, so knight takes, and knight takes, if queen takes, then here we see that when we played knight takes knight, we've actually uncovered the queen with a discovery against the pawn. So queen takes here would lead to bishop takes d6 check, winning the queen. Okay, so black actually did see the tactic at this point. So he didn't play knight takes e5. Instead, he chose to move the queen. So I believe he played, no, he played queen to g6 here. Queen to g6, and Morphe still wants to uncover this attack with the queen going to d6. So he needs to move the knight. Now, can he do it by making a threat? Well, yes, he can. Knight to f4 uh, not only threatens the queen, threatens the d6 pawn, and the knight's also starting to get a little closer towards black's king, so it's making a little headway there as well. So knight f4, black must move the queen. Queen g4 offering a trade of queens. Of course, your queen, as we discussed, is your best attacking piece. Don't trade it if you're attacking. So what does Morphe do? He doesn't play the obvious move, which is queen takes d6 check. This does look pretty good. Morphe finds a, a fancier looking move, which is knight to e6 check. Okay, well, what does this do? This looks like black can simply capture. Okay, well, now Morphe plays queen takes d6, but what's the difference? After king to f7, and Morphe continues, uh, Morphe continues his, um, his attack. Uh, okay, so this bishop is actually pinned now. So this d7 square is not quite controlled. If Morphe had not played this move and immediately played uh, this queen check, uh, okay, black can't quite move the king because of the uh, the, the bishops over here, uh, but maybe he can uh, he can start bringing. Let's see, no, he can't do that. Uh, he can't bring a piece over. He's gonna get checkmated that way. Uh, he's gonna run the king over to e8, and um, again, it's it's a little hard for uh, for Morphe to find uh, some moves. There there are definitely threatening moves that he can make, but. His plan becomes a little more apparent after knight e6 check. Bishop takes, queen takes check, king goes to f7, and he can keep attacking this king and forcing it to move out into the open. Now the king doesn't want to go to g8 because bishop takes check, wins the queen, so the king is forced to g6, again, out into the open. And now Morphe plays, bishop takes, with a threat to the queen, so Morphe does uh, regain his piece. And this queen moves to g5. And now is white, we're looking for some threats that we can make to black. There aren't any direct threats that we can make. Morphe plays bishop to d5, which opens up a lot of new threats for him. He can play a move like bishop to e4 check. He can play bishop takes knight, pawn takes, queen takes. And he can also move his queen over to this e6 square. Okay, so how does black deal with this? He plays knight takes e5, which brings the knight closer to the black king. And Morphe continues. Queen to e6 check. Let's see, oh no, not queen to e6 quite yet. First he played bishop to e4 check, which, which, uh, Black had, a, Black had a hard time deciding what to do on this move. He certainly doesn't want to go to f6 because of bishop e7 check, which skewers the queen. 
He didn't like the idea of playing king to h5, coming closer to white's pieces. And so black decided to play knight to f5, which pins his own knight, which might not be a great idea either, although black's in a tough spot either way. So knight to f5, and then queen to e6 check from Morphe. Queen to f6 from black. And now note that this queen is in a pin. So she does not defend f5, while white's queen does actually defend f5. Morphe can play bishop takes f5 check. Again, the queen can't take. She's pinned. The king can't take because this is defended. And black must, uh, black must continue running his king. Again, be careful where you go. King to g5. Same problem as earlier. Bishop to e7. If the king goes to h6, white could maybe continue with bishop c1, forcing him to h5. Black decides to play king to h5 uh, first. Pawn to g4 check from Morphe. And black captures. And when he when Morphe captures back and with a bishop g4 check, black resigns here. So Black must either go to one of these uh, one of these dark squares, such as uh, king to h4 and get his queen pinned again. Or let's see, his other options are king to h6, after which bishop to c1 check. Uh, let's see, yeah. bishop to c1 check will result in um, in a checkmate here. Or he can play. Let's see, let's see, king g5, again, there's the, there's the pin. Let's see, or let's see, king to h4, I believe is the last idea. And yeah, bishop, bishop to e7. Yeah, actually, we, 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 look, we looked at that one already. Bishop e7 again. Okay, so yeah, in this position, black resigns. Okay, let's look at one final example. This time Morphe is going to be playing black, and Morphe is going to be playing against the king's gambit. So pawn e4, pawn to e5, pawn f4, and e takes f4. Morphe accepts the king's gambit. White plays bishop to c4, which again allows this idea of queen to h4 check. We've looked at this threat before. So queen h4 check, and the king doesn't have to go to e2, which comes out into the open and. Uh, in this case, it doesn't block his bishop anymore, but it does block his queen. He can play king to f1 instead. And now the basic idea from white is that he wants to play the move knight to f3, which develops with a threat against the queen. And now this queen must move again. So that's the basic idea from white. Morphe, Morphe sees this as a double-edged sword because although white's king gets displaced, to a square like f1 it again it does allow white to bring his pieces out and make threats so morphe chose a move that uh, that is a little more pertinent to the center of the board he plays the move pawn to d5 which helps his bishop develop and it makes a threat to white so white needs to decide how to deal with this threat if he plays pawn takes that just blocks off his bishop and now his bishop's not a very good piece and in fact, black could keep it from getting out of the bishop's way by blocking the square pawn uh, on d6, bishop d6, which also holds on to the f4 pawn, which is annoying for white. So white plays bishop takes to address the threat. Black develops with another threat. There's one attacker, one defender. You need one more attacker if you want to win something. So Morphe decides to develop his knight, and he makes a threat. If white wants to save uh, save the pawn here, uh, well, he he can't really move the bishop. And he, let's see, he can't defend it either by playing pawn to c4, because now this bishop is trapped. It actually has no safe squares to move to. So a move like pawn to c6 would win the bishop for a pawn. The bishop can't move back because the knight's threatening e4, and... If you just do any move like knight to f3, then uh, black is going to take this bishop on d5 and then take the pawn. 
So white develops and he defends his bishop. He plays knight to c3. Okay, Morphy here decides to go and try and remove this defender. So he's going to develop and threaten the knight. Bishop to b4. Okay, white here. White here plays uh, definitely at least a questionable move. He plays pawn to d3, which actually pins his own knight, although it does allow his bishop to develop with a threat to f4. But keep in mind, if the knight is pinned, it's not defending this d5 square anymore. Let's go over some of white's uh, better options. Well, a move like knight to f3 might seem a bit more standard. Okay, if black takes this knight, white should capture back with the d-pawn, as it allows his bishop to develop and make a threat, and the queen can develop as well, and she's now defending the bishop here. Let's see, oh, and let's see, playing this game, uh, Budzinski is playing white, and this is Paris 1859, uh, if I didn't mention that earlier. So perhaps knight to f3 is, is a move, which which develops, and it looks like it holds on to everything. Although, queen to f3 is another interesting looking move. Not only does this develop the queen and support the d5 square, but if black plays bishop takes on c3, white could actually play queen takes on c3 now. And now she's on this long diagonal, so if black were to take this, uh, this bishop on d5, and the pawn as well, White could play queen takes on g7, threatening the rook, and now black's pawn structure is messed up, and white's retained his pawn structure. And note that the queen defends g2 from the opposing queen. But white chose an inferior movie play pawn d3. Okay, so now Morphe has a threat to win the pawn here, and he's going to use it. Knight takes, pawn takes. But he, he actually is not going to capture this pawn. If he captures the pawn, perhaps this allows white to just play his normal moves, like knight to f3, and even capturing back at some point. Morphe here, what he wants a little more than the pawn, and keep in mind the pawn is not really going anywhere in this case. What he wants a little more is he wants to develop his pieces first. So he sees this king is really exposed on the e-file, it would be really nice if he could get a rook to check white. So he castles with the threat to play rook to e8, which would then threaten white's king. Okay, well, what does white play? Let's see, white here plays queen to f3, trying to hold on to the pawn. Didn't address Morphe's threat of rook to e8 check. White thinks he's alright because he's got knight to e2. Now, Two of these knights are pinned, and let's see, g3 is kind of a weak square. Morphe would really like to play an idea like queen to h4 check, which would put the white king in a really uncomfortable position. And there's almost a skewer when you play bishop to g4, threatening the knight. However, after this queen moves somewhere, uh, there's no more... There's no more there's no more threat on this knight because you have two attackers and well white has two defenders and you can't take this defender away because the knight will just come back and you don't have a threat on the knight anymore so it becomes apparent that in this position if we want to move queen to h4 check to work we need to get rid of this c3 knight before it defends on e2 so morphe plays the move bishop takes c3 check pawn takes c3 and now Morphe finishes off the game with queen to h4 check, king to f1, and the last move, bishop to g4, which makes white resign, as anywhere that white moves this queen will result in losing a knight. So white resigned, uh, this was a miniature, this was only uh, 13 moves. So... Uh, so again, the rule for this video is to develop your pieces and make threats. Uh, so sometimes the threats are direct. Sometimes we have a direct threat. Uh, for example, here we have a direct threat to the king. Sometimes the threats are a little more complex, like if we 
return back a move. Castling makes the threat to play rook to e8. So the more you practice it, the more complex ideas you can get uh, in terms of how to attack your opponent. And the farther you can think ahead and calculate, of course, the more complex your threats can be as well. So that'll do it for this video. Uh, thank you all for watching, and I hope to see you back again next time.